Hey everybody, it looks like the text on the board is just barely visible, so I'm going to go ahead with this, and I hope that in the future I can find a thicker tipped whiteboard marker that I can use so that this is more visible, but I think this is okay for now. I'm going to go ahead and continue with part two of the frequently asked questions from this week. The next one that I got was, how do I label the parts of an integral in real life settings? That's a great question. I think you can learn more uh, from chapter 5 in your single variable book if you have one. If you don't have the single variable calculus book that corresponds to the one that we're using, then you may have to try and find it in whatever calculus book you used when you took Calc 1 and 2. Uh, but in Hughes Hallett, it's chapter 5, I think. Uh, but I want to give an example based on one of the problems that you worked on yesterday about Frankie the dog. So in this problem, I gave you this function. This represented the number of days per pound it took for Frankie to gain weight. This is days per pound to gain weight when Frankie's current weight is W pounds. Okay? Now, in this integral, W is always a number of pounds, which means that DW is measuring a small change in the number of pounds. That also will be measured in pounds. I think I should probably use a darker marker for that, or else you may not be able to see it. There we go. Actually, let me check whether that's visible. Eh, just barely, but I think I should use black or blue. Anyway. This is some number of pounds because it's a small change in W, which is also measured in pounds. And this blue rectangle, this part is measured in days per pound. And the limits of integration, 20 and 40, those are also numbers of pounds. They're values of the variable W. So this is W equals 20 and W equals 40. 20 pounds and 40 pounds. So what is this integral doing? It's multiplying a number of days per pound times a small change in the number of pounds. So what this is doing is it's measuring the number of days it takes for Frankie to gain a little bit of weight. We can tell because the units of this part are days per pound, and that's being multiplied by a number of pounds. So what I'm getting for my units are days per pound times pounds. So the units of the answer are going to be days. So this is telling me how long it takes for Frankie to gain dw pounds. All right? And we have w going from 20 to 40. So what this integral is telling me is the number of days altogether that it takes for Frankie's weight to go from 20 pounds to 40 pounds. So you see, in this case, it's easier to figure out the meaning of the integral when you work out what the units of each part are and figure out what the units of the entire integral will be. Remember, if this works out to days altogether, the fact that we're integrating isn't going to change that. This is just adding up a bunch of small changes in the number of days. I hope that helps a little bit. I know that wasn't completely clear, but I hope that that pushes things a little bit further. I got one more question about the vector stuff. I got one question that said, how do you do vector subtractions? I don't understand if it's head to tails or tails to tails. And another one of you asked, what are the different ways that we can look at adding and subtracting vectors? I'm really glad that you asked about different ways because there are a couple of ways, different ways of subtracting vectors. I'm going to show you two different ones. Here's the first one. I'm going to draw two vectors, v and w, and try to be really clear about which one is v and which one is w, because I know the writing is hard to see. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so I have v and w up here. I hope you see them clearly. All right, the first way I'm going to show you to subtract vectors is the add the opposite method. So if I want to know what v minus w is, I can think of that as v plus 
the opposite of W. And as you can see, I've already put myself in the way of doing this because I really want to draw another vector down here. So I'm going to have to move this over. I'll move it up, actually. Okay, so again, V minus W equals V plus the opposite of W. You probably already know what the opposite of W is going to look like. That's going to be a vector that has the same length as W, just in the opposite direction. So that's the opposite of W there. But if I want to add it to V, I'm going to go ahead and take this vector and start it at the end of V, because I'm going to travel along V and then travel in the same direction as this vector in the same length, but starting at this point. Okay, that's a pretty good approximation there. So this is negative W, which means that V minus W should look like this. It should go from the initial point of V to the end point of negative W. And that's my V minus W there, the one in red. Okay, that's one way. Uh, you can subtract by adding the opposite of a vector, but the other way is to use what I call the algebraic method. So I'm going to get rid of all my extra vectors here. Okay, here's the algebraic method. I don't know what this is yet, this V minus W, but I do know that by algebra, it should be true that W plus that is equal to V. So if I want to know V minus W, what I'm really looking for is what do I need to add to W in order to get V. And I can actually see from my picture exactly what that's going to be. Because in this picture, I can imagine traveling along W and asking myself what more I need to do in order to get to the end of V. Well, in order to do that, I need to travel along this vector here. Now, if you've been paying attention at this point, you may be thinking, wait a minute, that's not the same thing you drew before, and you would be right. The last time I drew V minus W, it was down here. But you'll probably recall that that, assuming the picture was exactly drawn correctly, that vector went in the same direction and had the same length as this one. It's just in a different spot. So again, this demonstrates that when I draw a vector, it's not important where I started. It's just important that it be a certain length and in the correct direction. Okay? I noticed a lot of you talking during class about whether things should be tip to tip or tail to tail or tip to tail. Trying to memorize that stuff is going to get you into trouble. But understanding algebraically how addition and subtraction of vectors works is a lot more likely to get you the correct answer when it counts. So please do your very best to understand exactly how the subtraction is defined. This is one way of doing it, and you can see that the algebraic equation works out just like you would expect it to. Or you can think of subtraction as adding the opposite of the vector w. I hope that helps a little bit. I got a few more questions, just to state a few of them. One of you asked how to apply vectors to a real-life situation, how to do dot and cross products and what they mean, and how to find parallel and perpendicular vectors in planes. And some of you asked also about projections. I want you to know that those are important questions, but those are things that we're going to do in class next week. So we're going to have a chance to practice those then. Uh, so I'm going to avoid answering those questions for now, and I hope that's okay. Uh, we'll get a lot more practice next week, and if you want to ask these questions again next week, I'll be glad to record them on the video. I just want to wait until we've had a chance to do problems first. Anyway, I hope this has been a little bit helpful. I know that I haven't given you the answers to all of the questions that you had yesterday, and I haven't gone over all of the problems, and I'm, I'm usually not going to do that. I'm probably not going to ever give you solutions to all of the problems, but I will take note of ones that turned out to be challenging during class and try to clarify those when I can. Anyway, hope this was helpful. I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.